I'm Ryan Leno and I've been uh, collecting music all my life. I think the CD started in 1991 when Metallica Black Album came out. It was my first CD I have in my collection still. Welcome to my CD collection here. This is laser line CD cases. Each column is 60 CDs and it goes all the way down the extent of this pew here. And in total it's 1,260 CDs just on this pew alone. Uh, well, the music listening started by my dad playing all kinds of music from the Beatles and the Doors. And my sister would have something like Led Zeppelin on cassette tape and we would kind of trade that back and forth. And so I was kind of hearing rock music, you know, since, since the age of rock and roll. My first music experience ever was when I was buying some of the original cassette tapes. I mean, there was White Snake on cassette tape and I had Poison on cassette tape and I remember that specifically. I remember having Bon Jovi on cassette tape. I remember hearing um, Anthrax, State of Euphoria album on cassette tape. So I just kind of put them in a, actually this case I had when I was a teenager. So I'm 45 years old this year and I had this box when I was a teenager. I actually found it in my parents' closet. So I decided to take it home. And just for fun, I took all my earliest cassette tapes that I ever owned in my life and just threw them all in this box so I could just have like a blast from the past. This is definitely like the first tapes that I owned. Some glam metal stuff, my Metallica, Twisted Sister, and some uh, death metal demos. And these particular death metal demos were just the first ones that I obtained in my first shows. Going to a show when I was 15, you know, bringing the flesh grind demo home. One of these nights I'm just gonna sit down and just listen to nothing but this box drink some beers, have some friends over, and just listen to the old, old stuff. I love this box. Guns N' Roses came out with Appetite for Destruction. I was in sixth grade, and I remember that specifically. A kid brought the tape to school, and we were all rocking that. And uh, my friend down the valley would be listening to the Motley Crue cassette tapes. And so I was already into metal, I would say, even before any of my friends or anybody that I knew had compact discs at all. So I'll be 45 years old this year, and when I was in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, approximately seventh grade, it was cassette tapes, and I have some of those cassette tapes still. When Metallica put out their Black Album, then I started the compact disc, and then I bought something like Ozzy Osbourne, No More Tears on CD, and then it was kind of CDs from then on. All of this middle section is your thrash. Most of it is US thrash, California thrash. An entire column of Metallica, Megadeth, Testament, Suicidal Tendencies, Anthrax. I've got one column of Canadian thrash through here. I've got an entire column right through here of my German thrash. And then I've got a section of some of my origins of extreme metal. So I've got Possessed and Bathory, Celtic Frost, and your more underground favorites like Hellhammer, Venom is here, Onslaught, Witchfinder General, Pentagram, Nemesis, Tormentor. I guess it started off with um, the first bands that I was introduced to, like Metallica and Anthrax, but soon Megadeth and Slayer were found by friends of school, real naturally, Glam was the first type of stuff that was coming out. The next thing that was coming out was thrash that kind of hit the market. And then very soon afterwards, so by the time I was in summer of eighth grade, death metal was starting to blossom and make its rounds. So as I was taking guitar lessons, my teacher showed me how to play one of the death songs. And then I went to a pawn shop and I found Death Scream Buddy Gore on CD and I bought that CD. So now maybe I have my 15 CDs, my Ozzy, my Anthrax, and my Metallica, and Death Scream Buddy Gore. And then from there, by going to shows and collecting all the demos, and then as those bands were releasing their first CDs, I would buy those CDs. So Thrash was blowing up, Glam was already there, and that was what was cool in the early um, 90s, and then by uh, 93, 94, 95, I was just all death metal through my freshman year of high school, all the way through high school, 
Um, me and my buddies were just kind of doing the death metal, so it was just collecting CDs. And that's where I obtained basically my first press original stuff that is now going for big money today. Here I've got some death metal comps, and then all these white CDs are my homemade CDR rips. So when I cannot get the cassette tape or was not available on CD at the time, or it's just completely rare, I will download it, make my own CD rip. That's just this extra section right through here. You can see underneath the, the church pew here, how I've got my totes and I can just kind of pull them out, put a cover on it like this, slide them into position. So I've got all my totes in a row and categorized as well. You know, I had Monstrosity Imperial Doom when it came out for 14 bucks at the local store. I just kind of set these here for now because I recently categorized this stuff. All my Swedish death metal. I used to separate the Swedish by brutal and melodic because, you know, there's a lot of just bouncy stuff like in flames, you know, that would be uh, the melodic side of Swedish death metal. And I used to separate them out, but now I just decide, okay, it's just all Sweden. I'm gonna throw it all together. And so now I've got my first pressings here. I've got my death metal compilation. Um, when, you're, when a band takes all their demos, for example, and they put it onto one disc, I threw that all in here. I took all my Swedish melodic stuff, I threw it in here. So even bands like Dissection are in here and Grave. Totally different sounds, but they're all Sweden, so I've got three full totes of Sweden. I just went ahead and alphabetized, and then after alphabetizing, it goes in chronological order of the album release. So there's a big section of Marduk in here, big section of Hypocrisy, Therian, Unleashed, Vomitory, some of the Swedish classics, they're all right here. Um, almost all of my CDs, uh, including the Sweden releases, are first press CDs. Sometimes they'll have an album and its reissue, but only because it's got special bonus tracks and things that are worthwhile having as a collector. From then on, I was able to add to my collection greatly because I already had kind of all of the classics, all the Florida bands that were coming out, all the Midwest death metal that was coming out where I was from, was something that was already in my collection. And then in the last seven, eight years of my life, now I've been going through Discogs and kind of collecting all these rarities and collecting stuff that I didn't hear kind of growing up. So I knew the classics, I had the classics. I had been listening to death metal and metal music all of my life and through my 20s and 30s, just kind of collecting as a fan. And then I would say as the last six, seven years, then it was really ramping up and being kind of a collector. I'm still a, a fan, like I listen to it, I love it, headbang, have a good party night with the music. And I'm also fond now of just kind of finding all those rare gems. Finally, to wrap up death metal, I've got the rest of my countries of death metal going across like this. It was pretty easy for me to leave one tote of just England. So most of this tote is Basically your big four. You've got your Benediction, Bolt Thrower, Carcass, and Napalm Death. But then there's also a whole handful of stuff that I just kind of leave on the top here. Bands from England. This tote here is gonna be all my Finnish and Netherlands. Not that I really need to put the labels on it, but at one point I was labeling them. I kind of know them by heart now. I know where to find my Finland and my Netherlands. I have one tote reserve just for these two countries because they're so plentiful. There's so many bands from Finland. There's tons of bands from Netherlands. I will know all these bands where they're from right away, but of course you've got Netherlands. It's going to be Asphyx. It's going to be Gorefest. It's going to be uh, Pestilence and Sinister. You know, those top four bands right there. But then also all of this Netherlands death metal. Alter. This is an excellent disc. Finland. Starting with Amorphous, like the Carillion Kyrill Isthmus is one of my first death metal albums of all time. Here's my original US first edition. It's one of the first bands that I had from Finland before I even knew, you know, that Finland was so cool with their heavy, heavy death metal. 
More bands that are in here are Disgrace, Demigod, Demolic, Interment, Ripakulu, Sentenced, Lubricant, um, big pile of stuff here. Desecracy, Galvanizer, some newer stuff, but then your older stuff is back there. So Finland, Netherlands tote. Next one here. And you can tell by the cards here too, just in case I've got some visitors. Germany, death metal. And that means stuff like Morgoth, obscenity, uh, atrocity, you know, some of the bigger ones from Germany, but then all kinds of underrated German bands are all through here. Um, Austria, Hungary, Switzerland, Belgium, Slovakia, Czechia and Bulgaria and Turkey. Most of the CDs are coming from the website Discogs. Um, there's Amazon, eBay. There's directly from the band nowadays, especially through Bandcamp. It's a really nice way just to accumulate the music directly from the band. You can message them on Facebook. Um, sometimes you can just buy the music directly from the band, the more modern bands. A lot of the rare stuff, you can't even find it on eBay. You're not gonna find it on Amazon. Sometimes a Google search is what you need and oftentimes it's gonna to lead to the website Discogs, D-I-S-C-O-G-S dot com, is short for Discographies. They're an American company that started a few years back that's basically hosting not just the album, the title, but then all the variations of its release. So you can see how many different versions of the vinyl, compact disc, or tape is being released through this website. And then you can select just the precise release, the precise edition that you want. I'm ordering the stuff. I would say a third of the stuff I can find here in the US and two thirds of the music is from other places. So they're just being imported from, from any country who is logged on to Discogs, any country who's uh, willing to ship to the United States and uh, has a shipping policy in place. I can order it from them. Next death metal tote is going to be Brazil. Half of this column is going to be my Sepultura, of course. Various editions of Sepultura from their classic albums, early editions, multiple early editions from Sepultura. Sarcophago is another one of my favorites from Brazil. But then also, you know, all your classics are in here. Other bands from South America, Chile, Peru, Argentina. And I've got Panama and Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore, Japan. I can just call it Island Nations is where I categorize that. Uh, some Iceland, Norway, Norway death metal. That's in that tote, apparently. Uh, this tote here is going to be Canada, Mexico, but then also Spain, Portugal, France, Italy, and Greece. Nice tote. And then killer tote right here. Poland death metal, got all your Polish classics, and then all the Australian underground. I've also got bands from Russia. They're all included in here. And that's all my totes of death metal. My American separated by state, all of my countries under here, from Netherlands and England and from Sweden, and then all of my death metal rarities on the other pew, 1,260 just rarities. And then all the ones in the totes here, I would say are your, your classic stuff. And so I probably have another, oh, I think 1,500 that are kind of classic and uh, 1,200 that are rarities. So it's, um, it's I think it's about 2,300 um, death metal CDs. People are always talking about like, well, it's on YouTube, it's on Spotify, it's on Bandcamp, and why don't you just listen to it digitally? because all the music you want is there. Well, some of the stuff is not there. I've got a lot of music on CD or even cassette tape that is still not uploaded digitally. It's still not available, and I can give you several examples. But the reason why I collect the physical format is because then I have the art to look at, I have the lyrics, I have the record label, uh, I have the spine to look at, I have uh, all the information there. And what that does for me is it allows me to remember my collection better so then rather than just having the music in a cloud, now I physically can organize it, look at it, remind myself of it, and I'm able to, uh, as if you were reading a book and you want to be able to remember the story, remember all the details in it, 
you know, by having all those spines in front of me, I'm very easily able to just kind of uh, remember the titles. Uh, no, I don't have a stance over, you know, vinyl versus CD and which one sounds better and cassette. I do notice that, you know, there's some subtle differences depending on the album, but there's no generalization of, you know, which one's going to be better or not. The process that I have for CD collecting is basically I'll go to a digital place like Bandcamp or YouTube and listen to it. And if I like the music and I think it's going to be good melody, I think it's good riffs, but I, if I find at least one talented person in the band especially, it's got a particularly good vocalist or drummer or bass player or what have you, and I'm interested and the price is right, then I'll purchase the album. And then once it arrives to me, I'll put it through the stereo test. And that means I'm going to actually physically play it through my stereo and find out what the production is. You can't really tell the production too much on digitization when you listen to YouTube, but when you finally have that physical format, then I can play it through the stereo and see if it's produced really well. And depending on the style of music, of course, too. So this is my stereo. It's an Ankyo receiver that I bought, used, an Integra CD player, five disc CD player that I bought used. Almost all my stuff is just used. CDs, everything's just used product because it works great. Uh, it's a powerful receiver um, run by some powerful speakers. These are B&W or Bowers and Wilkins tower speakers. And they're running through the back. They're actually have fuses in them to prevent uh, um, breakthrough. I have a subwoofer that's kind of hid back here and I just kneel down and do this little switch right here so I can have sub bass, some powerful bass. Yeah, and I'm spinning mostly CDs here, but also in the stereo there's a cassette tape deck right here, Sony. I also have a Sony turntable which gets seldom used. But it's a pretty powerful stereo and with the hardwood floors, you know, I'm just able to get the most of my metal sound. So I'll put it through the stereo test. And if it passes the two-step process, listening to it online, if I like the music, I buy it. If it passes the stereo test, then I can decide to add it to my collection. Then it goes into the void, gets categorized, alphabetized, and chronological order, all of those things. Moving on to the icy fringes of black metal is my 10 totes so far. Each one holds 50 CDs, so it's, you know, 500. 600, including that box over there, uh, they six or 700 black metal CDs, and they're just simply um, by country. So I'm starting with US black metal, and just like I had my death metal separated, I made all my little cardboard pieces so I can find all my stuff, Polish black metal, uh, Swiss black metal, and then again, Spain, Portugal, France, Monaco, Italy, Greece, um, all of this tote and most of this tote and all of that tote is nothing but Norwegian and Swedish black metal. It takes up a lot of space. Those guys are too good. Moving over here, another band that I'm really f fond of is Master's Hammer from Czechia. And from that band alone, I discovered tons and tons of uh, Czech black metal. So I've got a kind of accumulating collection here of Czech black metal. Finland is also another country that's really important for black metal stuff. And then I love all these small separations right towards the end here. Croatia, Serbia, Hungary, Bulgaria, Lithuania, Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, South Korea, Japan, and Australia. You know, all the way, New Zealand. You know, it shows um, that diversity of black metal and how black metal is um, basically now stemming from every country of the world. You know, how do I know if it's gonna be good metal? Some outside listeners, they might think it's all just, <laughs> you know, cacophony. But um, yeah, there's, there's good metal and there's bad metal and there's all these different styles. So you gotta know the kind of different traits of each style and which style they're going for to know if they're good or not. I guess just by sheer listening, you can determine the drummer's uh, accuracy, tempo, variations, 
can tell um, with a guitarist what type of tone they're choosing. You know, it's not just the notes they're playing, but their picking technique, um, right down to their musical composition, you know, arrangement of songs. Uh, vocalist can be anywhere from a big vibrato and operatic style in classic heavy metal. It could be screechy, it could be shouting, it could be growling type of stuff. There's a wide gamut of vocal talent, but usually with vocals you can just tell just by listening to it if you like it or not. Sometimes it's a make or break you know, for the band. Bass player, I like to hear some kind of bass line that's separate from the guitar playing. You know, it's one way to tell if the band that you're listening to has a good bass player, if he's able to go off on his own, follow the drums, and be separate from the guitar. Through my study of music, um, I'm able to decipher, let's just say, melody, harmony, um, all these various timbres that they're choosing, listening for quality music. It could either be effective, like it moves you in some way, it moves you emotional, or it could be music for listening where it's melodic and there's a lot of catchy um, hooks and melodic phrasing. There's the riff, you know, the almighty riff in heavy metal. So if the band is writing good riffs, godly riffs, um, you can just know when you hear it. I think, you know, if it if it's, uh, makes a bold statement, it could be a good riff. More metal! Um, I've got another small section of stuff that's not too easily categorized with the rest of the stuff. So this is kind of my goth rock, goth metal stuff. I've got a section of Nevermore, Satan's Host. Here's my kind of um, sludgy sort of stuff. Here's some new thrash. Uh, here's some German kind of power metal and speed metal that are kind of rare and oddities through here. I've got a few various comps of heavy metal through here. And then what else do I have? Um, I guess more kind of sort of miscellaneous rarities keep in this section here. Not so categorizable in these other totes over here. So just another section. You can listen for, I guess, hot licks. You know, in a guitar player, you might be able to have um, virtuosic technique where you're kind of able to hear individual notes. I guess speed of the band is sometimes important. Like if they're able to play at a fast tempo, but then still hold it together and make the various components of the composition um, st streamline, even though it's a very fast tempo. That's one good indication for metal. Right down to the band name is gonna be important. The album title, the type of lyrics and topics that they're choosing uh, might tell you a bit about the band. Um, their imagery, their, their font and band logo, is kind of cool in metal. There's lots of different um, ways to express yourself with the band logo. Live in the studio versus multi-track. So some bands can go into the studio and do some studio trickery where they're timing the drums and they're cutting and pasting essentially by sampling music so that it sounds machine-like. And we try to avoid that in metal. We usually try to have like kind of like real musicians playing music from the heart. Right next to my stereo, I've got just a small section, about um, 120 CDs that are just kind of like my 90s favorites. Stuff like um, uh, Biohazard, Fear Factory, Machine Head, some kind of heavy hitters that came out at the time, but also just some, um, you know, almost new metal type of stuff. And then this whole column is just kind of like my best of grunge. I've got some more in storage, but basically, if I just want to hear some of my favorite grunge, I can go to this column right here. Next to it, I've got alphabetized my hard rock and glam section right through here. So A through Z, and it's filled for about, about 100, 240 uh, hard rock CDs. Stuff that's in here is your classics from Motley Crue and um, Guns N' Roses to uh, some of the more underground glam and hard rock selection. I'm looking for music that's evocative. I think metal should be two things. It should be heavy and it should be somewhat dark. Like I've kind of concluded that heavy metal has a tinge of 
like darkness to it and the heaviness, you know, come rumbling from the bass and the kick drums should have kind of a, a, a rumbling. That's what kind of makes it metal. Lots of ways to tell if a band is good. Uh, there's even more ways to tell if the compact disc recording is good. And I guess we just use everything that we can to put it all together and decide that, you know, decide if, you know, that band is right for you, if you like the album or not. If I don't like the CD, I sell it. Basically, I only keep the stuff that I'm liking. So, although I've got a massive amount of CDs now, I've sold probably, you know, um, a couple thousand CDs that I've just been through, tried it. Sometimes I can't even get past the band name. It happens. All of this on the pew is alphabetized and it's 21 columns of 60 CDs each on laser line cases. And so it's 1,260 CDs on my church pew here. And I've got them alphabetized so I can find the stuff. And it's most of the rarity. So I don't have this many bolt thrower and this many napalm death. What I've got here is pretty much one CD from every band practically because they're just rare stuff. So this is the type of, you know, uh, minutia, you know, when you're collecting get into this stuff like Evoken, Exaltation, Excarnated, Excruciating Pain, Excruciation, um, Execution, Exfenris, Exmortem, Exocet, Exoto. I mean, I will go through someday and um, dish them out one at a time, but for now, you know, this is um, your underground death metal rarities. Most of the music is from about 1995 to 2005. I try to keep it narrowed down in a timeline too. Like if it's a brand new, um, you know, 2016 death metal CD, I don't put it in here. I just kept this for um, the oldest, rarest, um, good music. I've sold tons of it. A lot of the times when I get this type of death metal in, I'll spin it once. If it passes the stereo test, I'll put it in the collection. If it doesn't pass the stereo test, actually listening to the production, then I just sell it right away because I just want to keep only the stuff that I'm going to enjoy, the stuff that I'm going to listen to again, the stuff that I'm going to find that is collectible, that I'd be proud to show somebody else. Underneath the pew is my totes of American death metal. And just to figure out where I am with US death metal, I separate them into states. So these two totes are Florida death metal this tote here is my Midwest death metal. This one is West Coast United States and this one's East Coast United States. And you can see when I open up my lids like this and I'm looking for my stuff, I've got them all titled with the cardboard slip. So I take a hard piece of cardboard, cut it out, write the state on it like this. And so I've got New Jersey organized together, New York, Rhode Island, Delaware, Massachusetts, Maryland, and Virginia is in this section here. So most of these classics, US death metal classics, I know where the band is from. I can usually tell what the band is, what the title of the record is, what year it came out, maybe the record label, and where they're from. That's just the, you know, the five basic information that I kind of keep in my mind. Um, so if somebody says, yeah, you know, accidental suicide, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I know their, their album and I could probably find it in my collection quickly by organizing it in this way. If you just alphabetize everything, it's just going to be too disjunct, I would think, in, in, in my thinking anyway. Um, I'm from the U.S., I know the U.S., I grew up with U.S. death metal, so it's kind of fun to uh, keep them all in the States and you can see... Um, which bands uh, have things in common. And then when I'm done exploring, I can simply put the top back on, latch it down if I want to. I can even padlock this if I want to. I just slide it underneath the pew like this so it's just kind of out of the way. I like looking at all the spines. A lot of collections are tilted this, to the side. We'd have to kind of like read them at an angle like this, but all of my spines are facing towards me. The ones that are on the pews like this, the ones that are in the tote, I can just flip through just like going to a record store and find it by looking at spines. I love spines. Sometimes I want to see the spine before I even make a purchase. You know, the spine is a cool thing to have. I love the spines that jump out at you. 
you know, when you see like this, it's just like, what is that? You know, Morbus punishment, kill, you know, record label. I mean, just screaming for, you know, play me right now. This is kind of like a small section of 60s and 70s rock that um, um, I guess, you know, my dad would have playing. So some of the stuff influenced heavy metal, but most of it's just kind of stuff that was around the house even before I start collecting myself. So the type of stuff that my dad was listening to was some Al Stewart, some Leslie West, you had the Beatles, Harry Shapin, and then uh, the Birds, Beatles of course, The Doors, Steve Ray Vaughan, Humble Pie, Christopher Cross, Trapeze, ZZ Top, Simon and Garfunkel. So I guess I'd call it easy listening, but it's still rocking. My, my rarest CD, I've got Abrasion Why Survive. It's a thrash, you know, from Texas. That one's really rare. Uh, I've got a few titles where um, I don't know anybody else in the world that has it. I've got a lot of rare CDs. That's why I'm a collector. I'm collecting all the, the rarities. Um, I guess it's individual bases. I can find, you know, some that are just like, there's only a certain amount of copies in the world. There's some that, um, there's a few copies and they're available, but they're really expensive. So there's that kind of option. Sometimes you just can't find the CD at all and you get lucky and it pops up at midnight on Discogs and you're the first one to grab that CD in 15 minutes and you're the first owner of that CD for a while. Yeah, well, the, the way I take care of the collection is by organizing it as I showed you. Um, and then with the metal, it's you know kind of four main categories in my mind. I've got classic heavy metal, which I showed you the pew over there. And I've got my death metal music, which is this pew and then all my totes under here. And I've got my black metal, which is the totes under the other pew. And then I've got my thrash, which is um, basically the middle of that other pew. And so just by separating into four categories, I'm able to um, kind of distinguish you know, all the various types of metal, four main ones. Classic heavy metal like Judas Priest, and then you've got your extreme metal formats, which is death, black, and thrash. So most of the music that I enjoy is fitting into one of those categories. Okay, so I get a CD in the mail, and this is my little assembly process of you know, how I'm kind of obtaining the cases and, and cleaning it. What I'll do is I'll go to the pawn shops, thrift stores, and Goodwill and stuff. I'll just find music of, sometimes classical music that I really like, sometimes it's just whatever music, and I'll just buy it for the cases. And I'll bring it home, take the inserts out and put them in a pile here and just give those to the music store for free. And then I'll have all my classical music. And then when I get in cases that are kind of flimsy or cracked, I'll just put all my classical music in there and keep my classical music in a pile. And then all of my CD cases that I brought home that are good cases, then I will listen to the CD, make sure it passes the stereo test. And then when I'm satisfied with the album, I'm gonna keep it. Then I'll put it in the appropriate case. Get it in the case take my polishing cloth, a little bit of WD-40, if it's dirty, if it needs uh, cleaning in any, for any reason, and then you can just kind of wipe it off like this. I can wipe down the spine, and then you're just gonna pop the inserts out like this, and then just basically put every single metal CD that I get in, in a top quality, good sounding case that's operable, not, not cracked, and then when I'm handling my CDs, they're always gonna be clean, they're always gonna be heavy duty, they're always gonna be a quality case. So I just kind of like process all my CDs, listening to them, good case, once it's clean, organize it, and then I've got it in my collection. Why I collect heavy metal over all the other music is because it's the music I like. I mean, I'm, I'm fond of jazz and blues and early rock and roll. I've got my cache of female singers that I really like. I've studied classical music at college. I've got a degree in classical guitar, and I already studied Renaissance and Baroque and, and classical music, but it's uh, heavy metal that really inspires me to collect. So I could be collecting, like you said, just you know, all, this, all this music, but it's really just the heavy metal focus you know, that um, inspires me to collect and ha have the, uh, the hoard that I do. So I can explain my tapes. Um, all these old cases I found them matching on eBay and they're basically just full of uh, mostly demos. There's still some, you know, full-length albums in here, but 
A lot of them are just professionally produced demos. Um, so like here's Vibrian from Argentina, for example. Just a killer cassette tape. And um, this ranges from black, thrash, death. I've got some Black Sabbath Metallica and some thrash down there, but a lot of it is just kind of like cool, single um, uh, demo type of material. All three of these rows are Polish tapes because Poland had a lot of cassette tape releases rather than CD back in the day. So to get the first press, you know, you gotta get the tape from Poland. And um, just some classics in here. Sadus, Infernal Majesty, Slaughter, uh, Possessed, Venom. I've got some Exciter in here. I've got some Dark Angel, Creator, Whiplash, False Prophet, Merciful Fate. And uh, I've got a few death metal favorites. I mean, already I have these on CD, but it's kind of cool to have Cross the Sticks on original cassette tape. Gorefest, False, you know, on original cassette. Got some Napalm Death here. Here's one of my favorite EPs of all time, Benediction, Dark as the Season. I've got uh, the Privilege of Evil. You know, it was originally meant as a comp between a, you know, a split actually between a different band. And then they released on a Slimline CD, but you know, this is kind of a cool, cassette tape to have. So some death metal classic albums, lots of demos, and um, a variety of different stuff. This stuff is mostly Swedish stuff, so I gotta have like an ever flowing stream on cassette tape, of course. But also some killer stuff that, you know, you're not gonna find sometimes otherwise. Like uh, this Lord Belial demo is really great. The underrated violation, you know, from Sweden, a carbonized demo. I've got uh, the Harmon Harmony, Radiance from a Star. That's a really good album. It's you know, found originally on cassette tape. They released it on CD later, but you know, to have the original cassette tape is really killer. People recognize this one here, Necrophobic. This is the Unholy Prophecies 1991 demo. And that's all of my good condition. And just like my CDs, I put them in good cases. So I make sure the cases are not cracked, they're working properly, clean. I prefer the, the cassette to have the square edges rather than the round stuff that you have in today. And then once in a while it's cool to have even more vintage look by having the black background. You know, so this uh, cemetery, um, medieval shade of gray. By the way, another good example of having the cassette tape is sometimes the tapes sound kick ass. Uh, for some reason, Hypocrisy of Penetralia sounds amazing on cassette. This cemetery, an evil shade of gray, sounds amazing on cassette. People will probably have arguments of which sounds better, vinyl or CD, but actually, if you buy one of each, you might decide which one actually sounds best. Cassette tape, audio, CD, or vinyl. Another one of my favorites is Mystic Charm, Endless Sickness. So I've got a Mystic Charm from Netherlands, reissue CD that has this demo as a bonus, so it's digitized. But to actually have the original audio that uh, was being released before you know, this comp came out decades later is a really special thing to have. This demo kicks ass. Uh, phlebotomized. Oh, I can just, oh, just dig through this stuff forever. You know, possessed, poison into the abyss from Germany. Here's a Polish classic. The original, The Gods of the Crime by uh, Magnus. It's a really nice tape. Sarcophago, kind of an interesting edition of this cassette tape. Uh, just a classic for fun, Don't Break the Oath, original combat records. You know, let's go with a black background like this. Look at that gray tape. Don't Break the Oath. Don't do it. Here's one that you can't get on CD at all. Hence the cassette tape, Sodom. Expressive Sodom EP, kick ass. Cassette tape. And no Sodom is complete without Agent Orange. When is the end to it? There's no end, you know, it's just kind of like how much you can process in your mind, how much you can afford, um, what you want to ultimately do with it. 
I guess, you know, I'm still in the midst of collecting. I'll probably be getting more, but I'm very satisfied with what I have. Like I could feel like I could sit in my house for a year straight and do nothing but listen to the music. Uh, right now I've got about 2,300 death metal CDs. I think I have uh, six or 700 black metal CDs. Um, maybe 500 thrash and 500 classic heavy metal. So it's about 4,000 CDs total. Uh, what is your rarest CD? These do I order per week? <laughs> How many CDs do I order? Um, um, a lot, and I spend most of my income, I suppose, you know, just on, on collecting. It's, uh, it can be addictive. Um, it's an awesome hobby. There's lots of collectors out there. There's Facebook pages out there for metal collectors. And uh, yeah, I, I'm always looking forward to every day, get off work, go to the post office, see what's coming in. I grab what I received today. So for example, to me from a wonderful person from France, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. Um, this one is uh, from Declaration of Serbia kind of a Serbian release. And then uh, this fat package for me today is from Poland. I'm, I think I know what this is. This is gonna be four CDs in one package from Poland. Yeah, so the stuff is kind of coming in from all over the place. And yeah, getting, getting discs on a, on a regular basis. I'm constantly listening, ordering, checking out. Sometimes I get lucky, sometimes it's um, a little more timed but all the time music in.